in college, usually the most basic freshman courses are labeled 101. It may be English 101 or History 101, Math 101, Psych 101, Econ 101, Philosophy 101, something like that. Today, I want to begin teaching some of the basic principles about faith from Romans, the fourth chapter. You know, I remember in high school, we went on a lot of bus trips. I mean, we spent a lot of time on buses, whether it was an away basketball game or a band event, like going to KU for band day, or whether it was choir events, buses were the mode of transportation. And, and that included church trips, like mission trips. We'd sit in the back of the bus and we'd play cards for hours just to pass the time. Now today, kids would be glued to their devices, but we didn't have the devices, so we played cards. And I remember one of my friends who was a few years older than me, and he learned this really slick card trick, you know, the slide of hand trick, we'd call it. And he just kept doing it over and over, and I couldn't figure it out. And and, and I, how did you do that? And then another trip, and, and I still couldn't figure it out. And we were on buses for many hours, and I just kept bugging him, and Dwayne, how'd you do that trick? And Finally, I figured it out. I figured out how he did the trick. Now, just so you know, there's no trick to knowing God. You're not the object of some divine joke. God has made it very simple. As I said in the last series, he offers his grace that comes down in the form of Jesus, and our response is our faith. When God's grace intersects with our faith, which is a gift itself, boom, that's when salvation takes place. Just as I figured out that little card trick my friend would play, as soon as you can figure out that the key to unlocking the blessings of the Christian life is faith, the sooner you'll begin to enjoy all the blessings of the Christian life. Romans 4 is sort of a parenthetical chapter that Paul inserts. He's been talking to us about all these great doctrines, grace, righteousness, redemption, faith, and suddenly he's going to insert a little historical chapter and he's going to give us some flesh and blood examples of what faith really is. We'll be looking at the first 17 verses of chapter 4 in this series, but let's just start today with the first eight verses. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this matter? If in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about but not before God. What does the scripture say? Here's the first time of 12 times the word faith, trust, or believe is going to be used in these 17 verses. Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts God, who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of men to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord never counts against him. This is from Psalm 32. As we start examining the first of two series about faith here in the fourth chapter, I want to introduce you to this topic. What is faith and how can I appropriate faith? First, I want to talk about what the examples of faith are. When Paul is going to talk about faith, he gives us, as I've said, some live and living flesh and blood illustrations. He gives us two Old Testament examples. The first example is Abraham. Much of this fourth chapter is about Abraham. What can you say about Abraham? Well, He followed God's plan without knowing all the details. To follow God when you don't know all the details, that requires faith. The amazing thing about Abraham is he came along before the law of God was even given to the Jews. One of the questions that's been asked to a lot of so-called Christians is, who came first, Moses or Abraham? Did you know that about half of all the people who claim to be Christians get the answer wrong? Half the people say, well, Moses came first. No, 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 no. Abraham came centuries before Moses. God gave the law through Moses. Old Abraham came along before there were the Ten Commandments. He came along before there was the law of God. 
God just called him out of Ur of the Chaldeans, which is near Saudi Arabia today, or in the Iraq area. And God said, Abraham, there's only one God. Stop worshiping all the pagan gods that your family's worshiped for years. Trust me, I'm gonna take you to a land. It took great faith for Abraham to say, okay, yes, sir. And he moved. He started moving toward this land. He didn't even know anything about it. He didn't even know God's name. When somebody directs us to do something, before we take the first step, most of us want to know all the details. In fact, if Abraham had been like most of us, and God had spoken to us like he did to Abraham, we would have said, no, no, wait a minute. I need to know who you are, God. What's your name? Abraham didn't ask. We would have asked, now, Lord, we want to know exactly where it is you're going to take us. What's the name of this land that you're leading us to? Is it on the map? Can I Google it? Can you send me pictures of this place? Uh, directions, uh, the location. Abraham didn't ask that. Later on, Abraham just kept on moving by faith until he came to this land that was going to one day be Israel. Next week, we'll look at some other things Abraham did that expressed tremendous faith. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to reveal your nature and character to us as we explore your word. And I pray that in this series that we might better understand what faith is and how faith can be exercised in us. Lord, speak to us, I pray. And I pray that we would listen carefully. In Jesus' name, amen. of the blind purify